Hi, good to see you here on the Gapster channel. I'm Gabby and I'm going to talk about the Gapster TD1 DAC that I just released and some of its features and how you can configure it. First, a quick housekeeping. If you did order the Gapster TD1 and please check your PayPal, just make sure your address is correct. If it's not correct, send me an email. If it's correct, don't worry about it. All right, so let's talk about the Gapster uh, TD1. So it's basically a DAC that's based on the vintage uh, chip, the TDA1541A, as we talked about. And uh, now for those of you who think that, oh, I can build this thing, it's going to connect it to my uh, streamer that I bought from a commercial, uh, you know, one of those commercial streamers. No, this will not connect to that. This one needs to be connected directly to like the actually a night to s signal coming like for example from a reclocker so these, we're talking about the internal i2s signals or from a cd player uh, most likely what i recommend is to build one of uh, ian canada's uh, streamers i have a lot of videos on my channel that talk about that so you could build one of those there so the easiest one is to use one of the his pure pi as a base put a raspberry pi on it and a 54q7 so that's pretty much all you need and that should be able to get you a really nice reclocked uh, signal that is next to none and you can send that i2s signal to this board and from here on uh, this one will supply you uh, either if you're doing one single board you can do an rca mode basically and if you want to use two boards, you can basically do a, uh, a balance mode. Now we'll talk a little bit about that later, but let's just, uh, let's focus on one board to begin with as well. Um, you also need some power supplies. This doesn't run on its own. So this needs a plus five, zero minus five volt and uh, a 15 volt. If you're confused about this plus and minus business, it's basically two five volt supplies that are independent and you cross some of the wires. I'll put a, a schematics. I'll be talking a lot about these in detail in the, as, as we put a video on how to assemble it, but this is just a quick overview of what you can do with it. This, this DAC board is very highly configurable. And the reason why is a lot of people do it, they all want to experiment, they want to try this particular mode, this particular mode, because that chip can be run in different modes. You can run it normally on the uh, what we call a DEM capacitor, and that's going to dictate some of the, uh, the, uh, the frequency that's been supplied to the DAC. Or you could, there's some different tricks where you could run it uh, basically tied to the clock signal and uh, other ones that some people use a separate chip that actually provide the clocking. Uh, there's some ideas about also reducing uh, the, uh, the DEM to a very low uh, frequency. There's so many modes and some people spent um, years of their lives researching all this. So this, this particular uh, chip has been very popular and some people have spent a lot of time on it. And I have tried them all. I've tried them all not just once, many times. And I measured and listened to each one of them. They're trying to find for myself what works the best because it's easy to you read a lot and at the end you're getting confused and you know what's the most confusing is you've got one person that for example finds this particular mode is great yet a year later they kind of change their mind and now they're using just a regular dm capacitor so it, it's hard to tell and that goes to tell you that all these modes while some of them are actually great and i did see a, a good improvement there is not a huge difference between them, but some seems to work a little bit better than others. And I also have my favorite. So if you don't want to go through all this hassle to try them all, you can rely on what I came up with. I will talk about what I came up with when I when I go through all the details of building this. But, uh, but today I'm just going to give you an idea of what you can do. So if you want to do this particular mode and that particular mode, you can do it. Basically, there's ways to do it. There's a few jumper pins on the board. Uh, first, let's talk about the power supply. You can just give it 
15 volt and plus 5, 0, minus 5, and that's going to run the entire board. You don't need anything else. You can just uh, run it here, and that's going to be uh, running the entire board. This actually works great. Uh, it does sound amazing, so don't think that you have to have a, a whole bunch of power supplies to run it. But for the, those of you who want to go ahead, further up, or they want to experiment, the board lets you supply the what we call the digital side which is the chip here and the analog side which is at the front here separately so you can connect uh, basically one power supply uh, for the uh, chip uh, part for the like the TDA1541A and a separate power supply for the OPA 861s. Now on top of that you can also do separate power supplies for the left channel and the right channel. So there is ways to do that. Basically you remove those jumper pins and you connect directly uh, your own power supply to that. The, uh, another thing is this uh, does not use capacitors in the line of the audio. So it be because this particular chip produces a little bit of voltage on the output about uh, 0.2 and amplified is around 1.2 volts and um, you there is a, an offset uh, the, what we call a DC offset circuit that you can use to offset that and this way uh, you don't have to use any capacitors. Now you can also uh, remove those jumper pins and uh, not use any DC offset use basically some capacitors in the pathway of the line or you can use an external power supply just for the DC offset. So there's so many options there. Now a lot of amplifiers have their own built-in capacitors to, for, to protect from DC and uh, you'll notice that you may not even need anything even if you do have uh, a DC on your board. But it's hard to tell which ones do and which ones don't. Also on the back the board lets you run the uh, DAC chip in different modes. This particular DAC chip could run in regular mode, it could run with what we call a simultaneous mode and, uh, and also there's a part where you can have pin 2 and 4 connected or not connected. Uh, this also lets you uh, decide if you want to run the instead of the DEM capacitor to have uh, the uh, the DM tied to the clock uh, basically and so there's so many options you can do you can do them all I'm gonna suggest one or two particular modes when I talk about assembling it but you are free to try whichever one you like and make your own decisions I've tried them all and I've made my own decision now this is not, this is a four layer board. This is not a cheap two layer board. It's four layers and it's gold plated as well. So all your contacts are going to be top notch. Uh, connecting power to it, it's got some big pads. So you can run some very thick wires. In case you're running ultra capacitors, we all stress how short the wire is going to be. But at the end, we don't want them going on a screw terminal. We want them soldered directly to this. To this. But for convenience, there's some jumpers that you can use at the beginning to get things going and to get it tested. Uh, also, not only it's a four layer board, there's lots of different ground planes on it. There's some digital ground planes, analog ground, ground planes. What's really complicated is that the TDA uh, chip itself has a separate portion that are ground and analog and also I made specific attention to make sure all these are very well uh, taken care of. Uh, there's some attention to, to details on, uh, on getting the right components in the right places and all that kind of stuff has been I've spent a lot of time revising this. I've, I've, this is probably my my force different board. I've done a few before and this is finally the one I settled on. I didn't want to just to send one out quickly and just have things keep changing. So I'm hoping not to have to change this too often, but there is a possibility I might come up with another revision. So you never know. But still, uh, I've spent already quite a bit of time to, to get to this stage. So there are, like I said, four layers, different ground planes, digital, analog, all 
properly mapped so at the end you try to get the best uh, sound. Also even special attention that the, uh, that the data line are all the same lengths so you're not going to have any discrepancies in the, in the lengths of the, uh, those data lines. And uh, talking about that, if you are running two of these boards in, uh, in basically balanced mode, you want to make sure that you have the exact same lengths of your uh, UFL cables. So don't use for example, uh, four or three inches for one board and, and five inches for the other board, you're going to have some phase issues and some other issues as well. So you want to keep those lines exactly the same. There's, there's a, so doing a balance mode requires a lot of things. The chips have to be as identical as possible. There's a little bit of hurdles into doing a, a, a balance mode. I will talk about that. When we, when we get to it. The video ended up being a little bit too long, so I'm gonna split it in half. I'm gonna stop right here and I'm gonna post the next half uh, tomorrow. And I'll put a link in the corner here. So if you don't see it, just uh, wait till the next day and it should be there. Uh, take care and I hope to see you again.